page 5 of the Fall 2011 Exam 1. We're looking at barefoot running shoes. A study to examine injury potential of barefoot running shoes found that 50% uh, failed to adapt their running style to accommodate different choice of footwear. We're to assume that this 50% failure rate and thus 50% success rate is correct for the population of all female runners. So this happens to be the failure rate, but that does imply, of course, that the 50% complement of that is what we will call a success, that they will successfully adapt their style to accommodate that different choice of footwear 50% of the time. We're looking at female runners and a small, a small follow-up study is being conducted with a random sample of just 12 female runners. So our sample size is only 12, and it's told to be somewhat small. We're going to let x represent the number of female runners in our sample who do adjust their running form, the number of successes in our sample of size 12. We're asked to give specifically what is the distribution of this quantity. X is counting the number of female runners in our sample who do adjust. It's counting the number of successes in our sample of size 12. And the count variable for the number of successes in a random sample has or follows what we have said to be as a binomial distribution. Now binomial is the family of distributions and each binomial distribution is indexed with the particular sample size and the particular success probability. So we want to make sure we include the n, which happens to be 12 here for this example, and p here represents the probability of a success successfully adapting, which happens to be the 50%. But we want to just keep in mind that if that rate that was given here of failing to adapt had been, say, 40%, the success rate would have been 60. All right, binomial distribution. Need the word binomial, need to specify the actual sample size n of 12, and the probability p for indexing a particular binomial distribution. And now with that distribution, we need to figure out how likely is it that we're going to see at least 11 out of the 12 who will adjust the running successes then. So I need to find the probability that the number of successes is going to be at least greater than or equal to 11. Now in our counting here, that would correspond to either seeing exactly 11 successes or possibly the most we could get, which is 12 out of 12. So I want to look at my formula card for a moment and take a look at that binomial random variable section. And that binomial random variable section down here gives me the formula that I need for finding probabilities with that n choose k kind of expression. So let's use that formula here to work out our probability of at least 11. So out of the 12, I need to figure out how many ways could I pick the 11 that do adjust the running form. The success rate is 50%, and that's going to be raised to the 11 successes. And then 1 minus that success rate, or the failure rate, which is also 50%, is raised to the remaining one person who does not adjust the running form, fails to. And then I need to do that for the 12 out of 12, which is choosing everybody, and having everybody be with that success rate, and there's nobody in this failure rate category left over. So some of these are pretty easy to find. I mean, 12 choose 12. How many ways to pick all 12 people out of 12? There's only one way to do that. You just pick them all. And 12 choose 11? Also pretty easy because you're basically picking the one person you're leaving back at home and not selecting. And there's 12 choices for that. And then it's just a matter of getting our calculator out to do some of the work for working out this probability and making sure that our final answer at the end, which should be 0, 0, 3, 2, once we work out the multiplying in each and adding them up, is really a probability. And it's not very likely. If only about half really do adjust their running form, seeing 11 or 12 doing so is not a very likely outcome. Kind of unusual. 
And finally, we're asked to give a little bit more of what we would have expected to see, how many of the 12 are expected to adjust the running form. Again, that word expected, expected value. If you remember back from our formula card, for a binomial random variable, we do have the way of finding the mean and the standard deviation, and that mean is also known as the expected value. It's just n times p. We would expect out of the 12, about half. So about 50% of the 12, which turns out to be exactly 6 here, is our expected value for x, sometimes also represented as being the mean. Now we're not asked to give the symbol or the units here, but we would have at least the value 6 here on our final answer line. It is that we would expect at least 6 female runners, or at least 6 women, and had our sample size been 11, say, instead of 12, then half of 11 isn't a whole number, 5 and a half. We would have still put just 5.5 on the final answer line, but here it happens to turn out to be a whole number. All right, let's take a look at our next question on this page. So looking at question number 10. Healthier snacks. A lot of schools have started to offer healthier options in their vending machines. Now, some students have embraced these changes, but others are not quite so sure. Even those who come from families who encourage healthy snacks aren't so sure. So here's some stats, some rates that we have. 65% of the students have families who encourage healthy snacks at home. And I see here they've already identified, let A be this at home, healthy snacks at home. And 25% of the students regularly choose snacks from the healthy vending machines. So maybe I'll call this, I don't know, C. C means that they do choose snacks in the vending machines that are the healthy ones. And then supposedly 15% of the students have families who encourage the healthy snacks at home and also regularly choose snacks from the healthy vending machines. So this is sort of representing here the A and C outcome, the intersection between the two with that word and there. In fact, we could put the probability of A having a family who encourage healthy snacks at home, that chance is 65%. The probability that they actually choose healthy snacks at school through those vending machines is 25%. And the probability of both, that you've selected a student who both has the encouragement of healthy snacks at home and regularly choose those kinds of snacks from the machines at school, that that is about 15%. A little summary. We could set up a table or a Venn diagram to show that here, but what are we asked to actually work out? Are the events of having a family that encourages healthy snacks at home, what we called A, and the event regularly choosing healthy snacks from the vending machines that are healthier, we call that event C. Are those two independent events? Hmm, independent events. Let me remember what it means for two events to be independent. So under our probability rules, we actually have quite a few places where there's a statement here for independent events. And any one of those could be used to establish whether events really are independent or not. The one that would be most readily used in this example is the one in the middle here that says if we have independent events, the probability of the intersection between any two events that are independent should be able to be found by simply multiplying the two probabilities. Sometimes this has been referred to as the AIM rule. If there, there's an AND and they're independent events, then you can multiply the probabilities, AIM. So let's see if that one applies here. We're going to take a look at the probability of the A and C knowing that we've identified those in our work up here so we know what we're talking about, that supposedly is 0.15, and we want to know is that equal to the probability of A times the probability of C? If they're independent, it should be. And if we take the overall chance of choosing, having a family who encourages healthy sacks at home, that's that 65 percent, and we multiply that by the rate of students who actually choose healthy snacks at school, 0.25, that that product here 
of 0.1625 does not equal the 0.15 on the other side. So our answer is going to be no, and our support is actually already given. You actually have to do that numerical support check before you can figure out whether it's a yes or no answer for whether they're independent or not. Now, there's certainly other ways you could check for the independence. You certainly could have used any one of these other two definitions, say even this conditional one here, which would have required you to find that conditional probability first and see if it ends up being just the one probability of the event A alone. But that would have been a little bit more work to do, but possible. So there's more than one set of responses here that would give you the right support. You just have to show the work accordingly.